Today's video, we are revisiting the Socket 423 Pentium 4 RD RAM build. We got 20 minute videos on old technology, computers, laser discs, and some CDs. We got two little dogs licking their balls on the screen. And now it's time for the show. So, this case and setup may look kind of familiar to you guys. Uh, some months ago, I did a video on machine in this case. Same motherboard is in there now. But it was my year 2000 RD RAM build. And it was actually one of my most embarrassing videos I ever did because I screwed up royally. Uh, I kind of prematurely even declared the Pentium 3 hands down at 1 GHz Pentium 3 beats the 1.5 GHz Pentium 4 Willamette. Willamette? Williamette? Uh, Willamette? I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. They're all hot garbage. Uh, with RD RAM. Uh, I, I completely goofed that video up. Uh, I didn't have the chipset driver set up right, and it was just, it was a mess. I, I did a retraction video, and I tried to correct things. Now, in that video, at least the retraction video I did, where I tried to do things a little bit better, I got the chipset driver set up right, we did learn that the 1.5 Willamette Pentium 4 did, in most, pretty much all, with maybe some few exceptions, uh, beat the 1 gigahertz Pentium 3 because there's a long time rumors and to people talk the Pentium 3 is faster than the Pentium 4 uh, But we did pretty much conclude and this was pretty much uh, confirmed by other youtubers that do retro video stuff that yeah a 1.5 gigahertz Willamette is faster than a 1 gigahertz uh, Pentium 3 but you know the thing is it just it wasn't faster, but it wasn't much faster so, in this video, I wanted to take another look at the Pentium 4 in general, but specifically we're going to look at the height of the Willamette, the best of the worst, basically. So we're going to look at a 2 GHz Willamette uh, Pentium 4 on socket 423 with RD RAM. We're using the same motherboard, and uh, this is going to be interesting. The last video was sort of a 2000 Ultimate 2000 RD RAM build. This one is, we're stepping it up by one year. We're doing the ultimate 2001 RD RAM build. Uh, so, a little bit of difference, a little jump uh, with the video card changes. Mostly, it's a video card and uh, just a faster CPU. That's really the biggest changes. I, I did a few other little things that we'll talk about, but... But just first to kick things off, I just want to talk again about the Pentium 4, just in general. Uh, the Pentium 4, for a long time, was not a loved CPU. Uh, a lot of people, the general consensus was it was a horrible disaster, and I mean, there's people out there that hate the Pentium 4. Look, all I'm saying is, is that I would have rather been molested by my uncle than have had my Pentium 4. But uh, I have to say in recent years, especially, you know, with uh, YouTube channels like Phil's Computer Lab, where they tend to take a better view of the Pentium 4, it has gotten some more love lately, especially as sort of a retro CPU for running Windows uh, 98 and, and retro games, maybe even a little bit of DOS. Uh, it has gotten a little bit more love, but still seen as a CPU from, you know, the early 2000s running Windows XP, it generally still gets a lot of hate. Uh, some of that's probably deserved, maybe even a lot of it's maybe deserved. But regardless, whether you love the CPU for nostalgic reasons, or you like using it, or you, you used it back in the day and you just really liked it, or if you despise it, uh, I'm going to take another look at it in a 2001 type build, and uh, we'll see how the 2 gigahertz uh, Willamette Pentium 4 fares, and uh, we'll benchmark it and have some fun with this project and uh, see how it turns out. Alright, so this next bit is going to seem a little off topic, but trust me, I'm going someplace with it. Uh, now, I'm not really a quote-unquote car guy, so if I'm completely off base on anything coming up, uh, let me know in the comments if you are more knowledgeable, but um, come with me for a minute outside. So this is my car. It's a 1984 Pontiac Trans Am, and it's a bit of a project car, but it runs and drives. When you drive a 30 plus year old car around, you tend to have people stop and ask you about it from time to time, and I always inevitably get asked the same two questions. The first question is always, is it a manual or an automatic? It's an automatic. 
I immediately begin to see a bit of a frown start to form on their face as they look at me disapprovingly. So, if you're not really into the car scene at all, I should probably explain. See, in the car world, manual transmissions in a car are kind of like PC gamers to the video game world. There is a manual transmission master race, and I'm not even joking. Basically, to a lot of car enthusiasts, if you don't drive a manual transmission vehicle, you shouldn't be driving at all. And it's a complete cardinal sin if your car happens to be seen as a sports car or a muscle car. It's pretty much, here, take this shotgun and take yourself and your car out back and do us all a favor and end it. I know. I know, manual transmissions are faster, they're more reliable, they're better on gas, and there's the always subjective, more fun to drive, but I just get so sick of hearing it, and I'm getting completely off track here. Anyways, the second question they always ask is about the engine. Is it a 305 or a 350? It's a 305, and that's when the last glimmer of interest leaves their eyes. And this is where I get to my point here. See. The 305 V8 engine is in many ways like the Pentium 4. It's underpowered and it failed to live up to consumer expectations. Sure, with some tuning and love you can get some power out of the 305, just like you can with the Pentium 4, but well, it's just not all that fast when it comes down to it. And as for not living up to expectations, when people think of a V8, they think fast, powerful. Sure, there's more to it than horsepower, just like with a CPU, there's more to it than megahertz. But to your average consumer, they mostly only consider the raw numbers, and a V8 is supposed to be fast. Faster than a V6, and certainly faster than a four-cylinder. But the 305 was, well, not much faster, or even worse, sometimes slower. All the fuel consumption of a V8 and all the power of a VA6 was the insult commonly thrown around at the 305. Though to be fair, I suppose some of the fault could be blamed on all the emissions garbage tacked on, strangling what horsepower the engine did have. You'll pay for this, Captain Planet! The Pentium 4 suffered a similar reputation, especially with the early Willamettes. Sure, the early Willamette Pentium 4 was faster than the 1 GHz Pentium 3 in almost all cases, but the problem is that it wasn't much faster. For something that was supposed to be the next step in CPU evolution, and something that was 500 or more megahertz faster, it just wasn't very impressive. So here we have the pinnacle of socket 423. This is the 2 gigahertz Willamette. Uh, basically the same as the other Willamette CPUs, except it's clocked at 2 gigahertz. Now, keep in mind there are adapters for socket 423 that let you put in Northwoods and socket um, 478 CPUs. But this is the top of the line as far as just not using adapters or anything like that for socket 423. Now this is an end of the line sort of CPU. Uh, so this is the last CPU for socket 423. So as you would guess, uh, like a lot of these kind of things, it demands sort of a premium. This chip is far more expensive than it should be. They generally go from 30 to 40 dollars and they're not that easy to come by. Now I'm not saying they're rare but uh, as opposed to the other socket 423 CPUs on eBay the 2 gigahertz chips show up a lot less commonly than the other speeds the 1.5 or the 1.8 so on and so forth so these aren't quite as common as the other socket 423 chips and they go for quite the premium where you could get a lot of these socket 423 chips for much cheaper literally just a couple dollars but this one does command uh, a bit of a premium and in my opinion it's definitely not worth that now keep in mind for 2001 this was Intel's fastest CPU at least as far as I can find the Northwoods didn't come out till uh, 2002 and this is the highest clocked Willamette. Now, of course, uh, socket uh, 478 was out in 2001, but as we said before, for that motherboard, the CPUs were just Willamettes that were uh, put in a socket 478 sort of package. As far as video cards go, and the top dog in 2001, not quite as clear as in the year 2000. I'm going with the NVIDIA card. This is the GeForce 3 uh, TI-500, which is the high-end top of the line for the GeForce 3 cards. Now, it is debatable which is the top card, either this card or uh, ATI's Radeon 8500. At the time, uh, generally it was thought that this card was faster, 
because a lot of benchmarks and tests at the time showed that this card was beating the 8500 but later on when the 8500 uh, got some more mature drivers it actually seemed to do a lot better in some instances so um, it's kind of up in the air especially how you're concerned about period correctness and uh, if you're to the point that you only want to use drivers from the year 2001 but if you're okay with using later drivers like I generally am uh, it's it's kind of debatable uh, whether it be this card would be the top dog for 2001 or the Radeon 8500. Uh, some of the recent stuff I've looked at seems to say with using the more mature later drivers, the Radeon 8500 has a bit of an edge, but I don't have a Radeon 8500, so I'm just going to go with NVIDIA on this one. So besides the CPU upgrade and the video card upgrade, I thought I'd make another little tweak while I'm going to be in there, and that is replacing the hard drive with one or both of these. Now, I believe in our uh, our DRAM Pentium 4 system we have a 40 or maybe a 60 gigabyte uh, IDE drive. I think it may be ATA 100 or ATA 66. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, but anyways, I want to re be replacing it with one of these or both. These are Seagate Cheetah drives, uh, 10,000 RPM uh, drives, and um, this one is 33 gigabytes, and this one is 18 gigabytes, and these, as far as I can tell, came out in 2001, so that's perfect for us, and uh, I just have this uh, Adaptech controller card to control them. It's an AHA 2940U2W, uh, and I think this controller card came out in the late 90s, so uh, it works as well for our build. Just a quick look inside, it's pretty much the same as it was uh, if you watched the first video. I'm using that same kind of weird QDI uh, motherboard. Um, it has the weird sort of auxiliary connector here and the weird configuration with the RD RAM uh, here and then it has <laughs> another RAM stick uh, right there. Just kind of a weird setup and configuration. I'm, I'm sticking with this board. This is still a contemporary board. Uh, Socket 423 was out between 2000 and 2001. Uh, as I said briefly when we were talking about the CPU, in 2001 uh, boards like this were out, which is Socket uh, 478. Um, but again, the Northwoods didn't come out until, I believe, 2002. So a board like this would still be using uh, Willamette CPUs and probably wouldn't be that much uh, different. Although this one, actually, this is a socket 478, and it actually still has the auxiliary connector there, which is interesting because I thought they did away with that when they went to socket 478. So uh, this is an A-bit TH711. <laughs> or 711. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just opted to stick with the same motherboard. Alright guys, let's move on to some benchmarks. Before we look at these benchmarks though, I just want to put this out here guys. Uh, for these graphs coming up, please take all these results with a grain of salt. Remember, we're not doing a one-to-one -one comparison here. We're not comparing just a CPU to a CPU or a GPU to a GPU or anything. We're comparing whole systems. So uh, we're comparing the CPU and the video card in the 2000 build and we're comparing that to a build with not only a different CPU speed but a different GPU and also keep in mind I did use different drivers for the 2000 build I used my kind of old standby drivers for this period the 45.23 drivers and for the 2001 build I was like eh, I decided to go a little more authentic and I used period drivers I used uh, 23.11 I don't know if the different drivers made a huge difference in the results but I'm sure it affected things so again take all these results with a grain of salt it's just we're just doing these kinda haphazardly and seeing what we get so just don't take it too seriously um, so here looking at the synthetic benchmarks 3D Mark 2000 uh, uh, it was pretty close between the um, the Pentium 3 and the uh, 1.5 gigahertz Pentium 4 and then when we move up to the uh, 2 gigahertz Pentium 4 blows it blows the other guys away it's almost double the speed of the 1.5 but um, that probably has a lot to do possibly with the video card as well um, so because it is the next generation uh, GeForce 3 compared to 2 uh, same thing with 3D Mark 2001 SE not quite as impressive but the uh, 2001 build definitely uh, blows the 2000 build out of the water and of course the Pentium 3 build as well 
Also, just a quick reminder here before we look at a couple games that have built-in benchmarks, uh, just remember our Pentium 3 1 GHz build and our Pentium 4 1.5 GHz build. The video card in that is, of course, the GeForce 2 Ultra, where our uh, 2001 build, the Pentium 4 2 GHz, is the GeForce 3 uh, 500Ti. Uh, also keep in mind all of these benchmarks were done at 1024 by 768 with 32 bit color. So taking a look at these real quick, uh, Quake 3, well, results sorta of make sense uh, with the ups in speed. Um, not a huge difference though between the 2000 build and the 2001 build. I mean it, it's noticeable, definitely noticeable, but not you know too massive. Uh, MDK2 it is very noticeable, uh, like 80 some FPS difference there. Um, not sure what to attribute that to the to the uh, 500 more megahertz of CPU speed or possibly the GeForce 3 uh, video card and maybe the drivers probably com obviously a combination of them all but uh, something there is really seems to be favoring uh, MDK2 uh, Comanche 4 uh, finally gets playable on the 2 gigahertz Pentium 4 build uh, average of 32 FPS so finally getting above 30 FPS on that one so finally with this build it's it's kinda playable not super ideal not we're not looking at 60 FPS here but 32 is it's pretty respectable it can be a demanding game uh, at that resolution let's start off by taking a look at Halo um, I did run this at 800 by 600 uh, but everything else on high a little, a little different with these benchmarks usually I just go for you know a higher resolution and settings and see how well the machine can handle it um, with these tests on this video I tried to get games you know playable with at least 30 FPS and um, you know Halo ran just fine on this with that resolution but uh, if I crank the resolution up it really started to, to grind and it wasn't a very good experience uh, even at this resolution and this is the resolution I ran it with on my uh, year 2000 build as well and comparing them um, it's been a while since I you know played this game on that 2000 build but looking back at that video and stuff it doesn't doesn't really seem like that much of a difference with this year 2001 build um, it just doesn't seem to be running much better it, even at points it kind of maybe seems like it's running a little worse I don't, I don't know what's going on there but it's still still quite playable just not a huge difference between the 2000 and the 2001 builds alright so let's take a look at Need for Speed Underground I ran this on the highest detail settings but at 800 by 600 um, as you can tell, I am not the greatest at this game, and yeah, it ran fine, ran acceptable, quite playable, it, although it didn't stay above 30 FPS, there were times uh, that it would dip below 30, but it wasn't too bad. Overall, it was a, it was a fine experience, not really too much to complain about. And uh, here's GTA 3, this is running at 1024 by 768 uh, resolution, and this game runs really well on this setup. Uh, Really, most of the time, it really stayed above, well above 30 FPS. We even hit 60 FPS at times, and I didn't have any problems at all playing this game. So, um, I don't actually have a lot of experience with the computer version of this. Back in the day, I played it on the uh, PS2 mostly, but I didn't really play a lot of GTA 3. Uh, Vice City, of course, the 80s theme, uh, is the one I played the most, and I played the heck out of that. I almost completed it. Um, not quite, but I... I do remember back in the day, that was another one I just played on the uh, PS2. I'd like to, to replay them again, like seriously play them again one day on the, the uh, PC versions, but I hear there's a lot of things missing on the PC version, like less people and stuff like that, but of course it's easier to mod PC versions, so I don't know, one of these days I will uh, replay these games when I have the time, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of Vice City back in the day, but yeah, this was a fine experience on this machine, I really can't complain. And to mix things up a little bit, uh, here's some Empire Earth, an RTS game. I threw this in here just to mix things up a little bit so we didn't just have all, you know, action games and racing games and first person shooters. Throw in an RTS game in there too. Now, I didn't play long enough to, you know, to build up a massive horde of units and to send them against a massive horde of units in an enemy base or anything to see how it performed with a ton of units on screen at the same time. Uh, but what I did play 
it played fine. Now I was playing the game at the highest graphical settings to be perfectly honest. Uh, I neglected to write down uh, what resolution I was playing this game at, so I don't actually know, but I think it was 1024 by 768 but um, yeah, when I did play the game, it just played fine. No problems whatsoever. So at this point I wanted to move on and play some Far Cry, and as you can see here, this is the result I got. So you could hear all the sounds, um, but it's mostly a black screen. You can see some icons and you know at the bottom, but uh, mostly just a black screen, so completely unplayable. I also got some weird effects when I tried uh, uh, Colin McRae Rally 2005. It's not a racing game. Um, everything looked more or less okay, but the car is not supposed to look like that. There are some other little graphical glitches, but yeah, there, there were no the, the textures for the car, it was just completely black. So at this point, um, I knew this was probably a driver issue. So at this point, I did upgrade my drivers from the uh, from the period drivers I was using that were the 23.11, and I'd upgraded to my kind of standby drivers for the era, the uh, 45.23. So here's Far Cry, and this is running at 800 by 600 by 32. And um, it runs okay. We don't. We obviously we're not getting a, like a consistent 30 FPS, but it runs kind of comparable to our year 2000 machine. Which so even with the 500 more megahertz and the uh, GeForce 3 um, video card, it, it it runs pretty similar to that year 2000 build. It maybe a, a little bit zippier at parts, but it it really I didn't see a whole lot of uh, a difference between the two machines. Um, now I know the GeForce 2 Ultra and the GeForce 3 uh, 500Ti or Ti500, I know power wise um, I believe I read somewhere that they are kind of similar um, so we might be getting you know same-ish results uh, between those two GPUs, I guess maybe especially at lower resolutions, but I, I thought maybe the 500 more megahertz would help more, but at least in Far Cry, it just they just seem doesn't seem to be that big of a difference. Now upping our resolution to 1024 by 768 by 32, it was actually still playable. Now I don't think I have any footage sitting around anywhere when I tried this resolution, you know, on the original year 2000 build, but I remember it being really not playable. It didn't play well, and here it's again it's. It's almost the same as uh, at 800 by 600. So um, yeah, it, it, maybe that's the advantage to this build. Uh, it does a little bit better at higher resolutions. Um, although it does look like we do have a little graphical glitch uh, down at the bottom, the little compass thing in the lower left-hand corner. Um, yeah, that that doesn't look right. But I mean, again, it's it's not 30 FPS, but it, it you know depending on your tolerances, I think it's kind of playable at 1024. Uh, by 768 by 32. Um, also, I seem to remember on the 2000 build, and which is weird because we're using the same drivers at this point, there was a little glitch right there on that wall, and uh, the glitch isn't happening on uh, this build, so, hmm. It, well, now we have a different glitch, but anyways, I thought I'd point that out. Alright, so let's take another look at Colin McRae Rally 2005. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It was a Scottish name. Shouldn't be too strange. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Um, and this is at uh, 1024 by 768 and high details as you can see now with the new drivers um, since I updated the drivers it looks more or less okay we finally get you know colors on the uh, car and it looks I believe it looks uh, fine at this point I don't see any graphical glitches although I am not too familiar with this game at all and as you can see I am way worse at this game even than I am at uh, Need for Speed Underground I'm just terrible at this game, but I haven't played it very much. And yeah, this, this game plays fine. You usually get a pretty consistent uh, over 30 FPS, so uh, yeah, can't complain with this thing. Now I didn't try it with the uh, anti-aliasing on. I, I, that probably would have demolished the frame rate. I didn't even try, but yeah, runs just fine on this build. Alright, so let's talk about an OS with this guy here. We're running Windows 98 SE, mostly just to keep everything, the benchmarks and everything, kind of in line with the 2001 RD RAM Pentium 4 build that I did. Um, but also, XP did come out in 2001, but it was kind of at the very tail end of 2001. So even though XP did come out in 2001, I still think 
Windows 98 SE is a more fitting overall OS for that year. Of course, you know, NT and Me in 2000 were out, but I don't think a lot of uh, people at home use those OSs. But in that same note, you might say, hmm, well, didn't the 2 gigahertz uh, Willamette Pentium 4 come out at the tail end of 2001? Uh, kind of. I think that came out in August. I wouldn't call that the tail end. Uh, definitely past the midpoint, but that's a good point. So let's dual boot XP on this guy. So after installing XP, the OS itself was actually pretty zippy uh, and responsive, and it ran just fine on this build, um, no issues whatsoever. But installing XP on this machine did give me the opportunity to run some later, more intensive games that just wouldn't run in 98. So uh, just keep in mind before you put something in the comments, yeah, these games on this machine are not fair. Uh, they're well out of the scope of a 2001 build, so I didn't expect them to run well at all, uh, but so th I just wanted to run them just for fun, just to see if we could get them to run. Um, I only tried to run two games, uh, just because I didn't want this video to be too long. Um, so let's see, uh, first let's see how Doom 3 ran on this 2001 build. Now even at the lowest settings and 640x40 resolution with low quality settings, uh, this game did not run very well at all, at least with the benchmark. Uh, I averaged about 20 frames per second, um, which I guess it could be playable uh, if you really wanted to play this game back in the day and you didn't have the money to upgrade uh, from what you had in 2001. You could run this game, but I'm sure in certain parts it would super chug. Uh, but like I said, even the lowest settings with the benchmark, we were only getting uh, 20 FPS. Uh, keep in mind, throw something like a G4 6 in here, I'm sure it would run these later games uh, better, but that's out of the scope of this video, although I might try that at a later point. And lastly, I did try to play Crisis on this machine because, of course, why wouldn't I try to play Crisis on this machine? And uh, it's well under the recommended minimum specs, uh, but it wouldn't run, uh, but that's mostly the fault of the video card, or solely the fault of the video card. Um, since we've seen this game run on a Pentium 3, so the Pentium 4 should have ran it, although not well. Uh, but if I probably threw in like a G4 6, it should run it uh, not well, I'm assuming. <laughs> but um, I just I wanted to try this because in my last video with the Pentium 4, someone commented that they knew someone that had a Willamette Pentium, and they kept upgrading it over the years, and they were able to play Crisis on it fairly well. And uh, I don't know how much of their validity is to that, but I was a little bit curious, so maybe in a future video. So to wrap up this video and say what I want to say about the Pentium 4, and specifically this computer here with the height of the Willamette, Williamette, uh, first gen of the Pentium 4, uh, hopefully without rambling. I know I do tend to ramble, so um, I'll try to avoid that here, but uh, no guarantees. So back in the day, I never actually had a Pentium 4. They just, I, I found them boring, I guess. They just never really interested me. Um, I went straight from a Pentium 3 to socket 939 machine. I had the Pentium 3 for a long time. I, uh, one of those cheapo 1 gigahertz compacts with like the, uh, the different colored plastic front. I guess they were kind of going for a iMac sort of color scheme sort of thing back then. But I, I had that computer for a long time before I went over to Socket 939. So I don't have any kind of nostalgic attachment to the Pentium 4, but um, I didn't really want one back in the day. But like I said, I, I am kind of indifferent. I, I certainly don't think they're, you know, one of the great CPUs, but I don't really have the hate that, that a lot of people have for them. Although I, I can see the argument on both sides. So uh, on, on the side that likes the Pentium 4, I, I get the argument. Although a lot of the argument that comes up is, well, they make great retro Windows 98 machines, and that's true. That is very true. But I hardly ever hear people talk about how they make great Windows XP machines. I mean, they make okay Windows XP machines, but I usually don't hear people singing their praises, even the people that love the Pentium 4. The argument usually is, it's a great Windows 98 machine. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of people that love to use the Pentium 4 with Windows XP, and I know a lot of people are nostalgic for it, but like I said, I, I just do not see it as one of the great CPUs. Um, on the other end, I can also see why people hate it. 
uh, it just was not that big of a jump, it seems, from the Pentium 3. It, in some cases, it seems like a step backwards. I, the big argument I always hear, too, is, ah, uh, you know, we would be so much more advanced if they just didn't go with NetBurst and they just kept concentrating on, you know, the same architecture as the Pentium 3. It's, you know, the, the it was a dead end, the NetBurst and the Pentium 4, and it set Intel and CPUs back years and where would we be today if they didn't make that misstep? Uh, I hear that argument a lot. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, obviously, I can't see into alternate timelines and dimensions. So, who knows? But, you know, I can understand the argument. Um, but like I said, personally, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent. Uh, I was slightly on the side of, you know, I'd probably rather have an AMD build for this era. Uh, now, specifically on this machine, the uh, 2001 machine, um, as for the Willamette CPUs, uh, they're garbage. <laughs> I do not really care for them. I think that they did a lot in giving the Pentium 4 a bad name. Uh, I mean, I understand how things go and they need to put things out, but I think the Pentium 4 would have went over a lot better if they did something else with that year, maybe put out some more faster uh, Pentium 3s or did something more with the Tualatins and just waited for the Northwoods and... Uh, put out the Northwood as the first gen of the Pentium 4. I think maybe the Pentium 4 would have gone over better and it might not have had the as bad of a reputation as it kind of has today. I just... The, the, the first generation of the Pentium 4, the Willamettes, they just... They're just not that great. Uh, you have to have like weird motherboard. The Socket 423, it lasted like a year and a half, two years. Um, they just... They're not much more powerful than a Pentium 3. I mean, this is the height of the Willamette um, CPU of the first gen of the Pentium 4. And I bet, you know, if I compared this machine up to like a 1.4 gigahertz to Allen uh, Pentium 3 machine, that would probably give this thing a good run for its money. Um, so yeah, it's, they sh mm. I just think they would have been better if they just skipped the Willamettes and went straight with Northwood. But, you know, that's just how it goes. You, sometimes you just got to put out what you have and you can't really wait. I'm sure there's marketing reasons and all kind of different reasons for that. But anyways, um, yeah, not to ramble too much here, but that's basically my uh, feelings on this machine, the ultimate 2001 RD RAM Pentium 4 build. Don't spend the money on a 2 gigahertz uh, Willamette CPU. Just don't. <laughs> unless, unless you really just like an odd system and just want the height of that first gen of the Pentium 4. They're overpriced, um, not much more power. You could just get a, like a 1.9 or 1.8 uh, gigahertz. I think they're like much cheaper and easier to find. And that extra one or two hundred megahertz, you're really not going to see that much of a performance increase. So don't feel bad about getting a slightly slower uh, P4 if you're really dead set on getting that first gen of the Pentium 4 machine. Yeah, just don't pay the money for that 2 gigahertz chip. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's, it's a collector's item um, these days. But anyways, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Got more stuff coming. Um, check out, I believe, um, why do you have this computer review? I'm going to give him this machine after I'm done with this video. And he's going to, I'm sure he's going to do a very interesting uh, review of this uh, machine. Because I know he, he loves the Pentium 4. But I'm sure it will be a very unbiased and fair review of this machine. So I'll put a link in the description if he does do a video on it. So be sure to check it out. Um, Alright, so you guys have a good one. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this kind of content, remember to please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.